Welcome back. Cliffy has been thrown into jail. And I believe that that scene is actually a reference to the classic Star Trek episodes, The Trouble with Tribbles, where Scotty starts a bar fight with some Klingons after they call the Enterprise a garbage scow. And then even go uh, even further and claim that the Enterprise is garbage. Of course, the difference here is, as Roger rightly pointed out, that the Eureka is a garbage scout, but apparently Cliffy does not rem like to be reminded of that fact. Anyway, since apparently Starcon does not believe in due process, it's up to us to break him out. Unfortunately, there's some guards here. Well, maybe if we ask them nicely, they'll let uh, Cliffy out. At lost, Pinhead! They're as, ni they're as nice as the people at the Academy. Did your mother have any children who lived? Yeah, me. A variety of controls, including those for the force field, are operated from this console. I was actually trying to look at the guy, but anyway. The security guard has recently undergone sensitivity training and now likes to read his victim's poetry before beating them unconscious. My god, the horror! Starcon security police are normally irritable, surly and generally of poor disposition. Except on those rare occasions they feel something is important enough to get really angry about it. This area of the space station houses space bar patrons whose recreational activities go beyond accepted standards of polite society. Indeed. This cell appears to be as empty as the orb atop your shoulders. Impressive that he can see it from there. Unlike the other detention cell, this one seems to be occupied. Maybe that's uh, Cliffy in there. Well, let's see if we can get to him. I'm sure those guards won't stand in our way. No! But this force field might. Ha ha! Uh, sorry about that, Joyce. I just now uh, turned the force field off. Go on in. Okay, how nice of them. No! Ha! <laughs> what a dweeb! I can't believe he fell for the old shut off the power trick. Ha <laughs> ha! You aren't nice. Scram, Pee-wee! Okay, I guess we need to uh, find a way to get them away from here, like create a diversion or something. What do we have that could create a diversion? Spike? Nah. We could hit them with a stick, or throw a hole punch at them. Uh, well, we did have these, uh, these space monkeys that we got from the, the merchant earlier. A package of dehydrated space monkeys given to you by the sales beast at the space bar. A small label at the bottom reads, Warning! Do not allow contents of package to mix with alcohol. Well, I'm guessing that if we uh, do mix it them with alcohol, the results might be entertaining and maybe enough to provide it the distraction we need. We also have his business card. But that's not useful right now, so let's uh, <coughs> throw some monkeys into some alcohol, I guess. Uh, maybe uh, flow and drool have some useful things to say about the situation. Did you notice the alien sitting with Quirk in the upper booth when we came in, Captain? Yes, I did, actually. What about him? Well, I have an excellent memory for cranial configurations, and I'd swear it was the same creature we saw in that transmission we intercepted. Yes. What do you suppose it was doing with Quirk? I haven't any idea. idea. Uh, what do you think, Drool? Beats me. I didn't even see the guy when we came in. Okay, nothing to say about Cliffy? 
Geez, your concern for your fellow crew members is really, uh, big, isn't it, Flo? Well, then again, Cliffy is a man, so he's got that going against him, uh, from her point of view, anyway. Why did you say, uh-oh, here we go again, when we came into the bar? Cliffy had a slight misunderstanding with a crew member from the Intrapid the last time we came in here. What do you mean by slight misunderstanding? Apparently, Cliffy made some colorful speculations about this crew member's parentage. Then he proceeded to make some unflattering anatomical references. I get the idea. Mills, you can't live with them, and sometimes you can't even house train them. Wait, what? Why, that reminds me of my 14th husband, Flat. He was always brawling. The captain doesn't have time to listen to one of your fascinating personal narratives right now, Flo. He has to figure out how to get Cliffy out of the slammer, right, sir? Right. Uh, yeah. That was what you were doing, wasn't it, Wilco? See? I told you the captain wasn't a complete closet case, Flo. I'm with you, sir. Let's go blast him out. That's a fine idea, Drool, but it would draw too much attention. There's got to be a better way. The impression that Flo might, uh, for Drool might be a bit trigger-happy. Why don't you get started on your project, sir? Okay, I guess we're gonna have to figure it out ourselves, so let's try the Space Monkey plan. Let's see what happens. And we put them in our drink, which was a double bourbon, so definitely alcohol. Ooh, these things float, apparently. And they reproduce rather quickly. Nearest I can tell, they're born pregnant. I figure if we were... Who's the more who let all the darn space monkeys lose? I figure if we were referencing uh, Trouble with Tribbles, we might as well do it properly. Well, this is certainly interesting. Man, there's a lot of them already. He's a cute little bugger, isn't he? I wonder what would happen if you put him in the microwave? Hey. You've got a sadistic streak, haven't you, narrator? These pseudo-primates seem to possess pronounced proclivity for procreation. Points for alliteration there. Yeah. The atmosphere of the space bar is growing thick with the pungent smelling bodies of space monkeys. It's only a matter of time until the cooling ducts get blocked up. This could turn into a dangerous situation. Indeed. As long as it provides us with the uh, distraction we wanted, that's fine with me. Well, let's see if the guards have noticed anything as amiss. So, I'm outside the airlock on an EVA, and I hear the phone ring. I gotta climb in, cycle the airlock, decontaminate, climb out of the pressure suit, and run to the phone. I hate that! It's even worse than being called in a shower, I guess. Turns out, it's one of those new phone companies wanting me to switch galactic long-distance carriers. He's talking about all these big savings I get if I just switch from Sprint to TNA's Friends and Aliens plan. Could you make this a little more obvious? Can you believe it? What'd you tell them? I said, no way! It just isn't worth it. Alert! 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 Come on, let's go see what it is. Maybe we'll get to beat somebody up. Not unless you want to beat up some monkeys. And they completely ignore me. Whee! Oh, well, aside from that commercial uh, we just had to witness, that went pretty well. Uh, well, when we looked at the control panel, it said that the controls for the force fields were on there. 
So I guess that we can uh, switch the force field off. There we go. And let's see if we can uh, locate our chief engineer. Which we should be in the second cell, because we already saw the first one was empty. There he goes! Hmm. Now what do we do? Guess we're gonna have to get him out of here, but we'll have to see how in the next video.